Okay, today I got this 75 inch Hisense, and a lot of people have been asking me about this TV, so I finally decided to do a video. So, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna plug it in, and as you can see, we have a solid red light over there in the left corner, and it's gonna start flashing. I don't know why it's not flashing now, but uh, there it goes. Okay. So we got that weird flash. Like a two blink code error. Okay. So the TV's supposed to be on. I'm just going to take my flashlight and I am going to look. And right, right before I even put the flashlight too close. Up close to the screen, I can actually see everything. It says Roku right here, um, live TV, Sling right there. Okay, I can see everything on the TV. So I'll tell us that we have a backlight problem. Now, a lot of cases, the TV will actually flash, the screen will flash if you turn it on, and then we'll go back to this dark. And once again, you can still put your flashlight up to the screen, and if you see anything, um, on the screen with your flashlight, then you know you have a backlight problem. Point blank, period. It's not anything else. It's not the power supply board. It's not the main board. Not the TCOM board. You have a backlight problem. This is like the tenth one I've worked on. Same thing, same problem. It's like I said, well, sometimes the screen will flash. Sometimes the screen will not flash. But if you put your flashlight up to the screen and you can see your menu, your, your home page, then you have a backlight problem. Okay, so what you need to do is use a strong, sturdy table, and I, as you can see, I have actually I have two blankets, and one here, one here, make it nice and soft. Okay. And I'm gonna grab the TV the long way with one hand on the top and one hand on the bottom, center mask. And I'm going to place my TV face down with the back towards that away. Okay, because I'm gonna have to flip it around and there's some more stuff that you have to do. And that's how I'm gonna move the TV by myself. Very carefully, just like that. Okay, so obviously the first thing I want to do is remove the back cover. We have screws and these holes going across, down, right here, across here, right there. So pretty much all the screws, and then we have one screw where the jack, this little AV jack panel is right there and right there. So obviously pretty much self-explanatory. Okay, the model number of this TV, as you see at the top, it says 75R70. 75R7070 E2. Now, the strips on this TV are a little different than the 75R6E, I think. So I thought I had these, but I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to have to fix the strip. There is nothing connected to the back cover, so we'll just take that off. We're going to disconnect our speakers. Let's pull them up. And we're going to disconnect our feet. They are marked right and left on the inside they each have four screws for a total of 16 screws 
Make sure you keep all of these together when you pull them off. Slides right, slide it down, comes right out. Now what you may also want to do is pull the Wi-Fi module out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just, uh, I think this just, it clips right out. That way you won't break in case when you flip the TV around or flip it over on his back. Push it up, pull the clips up on each side, push it up. I'm going to disconnect it from my main board, okay? And the actual antenna is on this foot right here, this very far right foot. tape up under here, just take the tape off, pull that off, and this all is one piece. Okay, this is our LED wire, LED plug, which goes, as you can see, is going inside of the TV. So the 75R6E3 has just two lines, this one actually has four lines and even though it's marked positive negative positive negative on the legend when we test it our negative lead goes here positive here negative lead here positive here that's two lines negative lead here positive, and so on and so forth so i'm going to test the first line with my negative lead right here okay and we show approximately 80 volts seventy nine volts and I can see backlights right over here, coming through the TV. Right there. I'm gonna take it off, okay? I'm gonna go to my next line. Let me turn the lights off so you can see it better, maybe. I'm gonna go to my next line. Negative here, positive to the next one, seventy nine volts, and I do see backlights on the other side. Okay, now this one, same way, positive, positive, come on. Negative, 79 volts, all right. And on our last one, I did set backlights over here. Our last one, is open. The last two here. And that would be on this side. So our bad LED strip is on this side, the left side, or if you're looking at it from the front, the right side of the TV. All right, so let's continue. All right, so we'll leave this disconnected for right now. And don't forget about our power button. Located right here. That just pulls right up. They have some clips right here if you can use your fingers. There we go. All right, just pull it right up. That comes right up. I'm actually gonna tape it to the side. Okay, that's our power button with our light on it, our standby light on it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to disconnect. I'm going to take off those rumor connectors going from the T-Con board to the panel. I'm going to take them all the way off. And they go just like that. I don't, I don't 
to commands them to go back that way. But just on the safe side, I'm gonna put just mark them, the top part, just so I'm gonna put a T right here and a T right there. Okay. Then what we're gonna do is loosen our driver boards. I'll do one so you can see. I wanna pull the tape off of it from, at, from the uh, driver boards, that is a grounding tape. Make sure when you put this tape back on, being very careful not to touch, bend, puncture these room connectors at the bottom. Those are actually going to the panel. If you damage those, the TV is through gambling, all right? And want to carefully, see that's the grounding area, the tape goes on. So you put the tape back on, don't just pull the whole tape off and then when you put it back together, put the tape back on and it's touching all the way down here because you're going to short something out. That tape is conductive, okay? Let's go down to the next one. Be very careful whatever you're using. Do not, once again, I'm gonna say it again, do not puncture those connectors down here. Do not crunch them, do not scrunch, whatever. Do not tear them because what's gonna happen is you're gonna see lines and stuff in the screen and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it, all right? So once that is done, what I can do is actually, there's a clip right here. I can actually bring this out right there. Bring that out, okay? Push it down and then I can actually Just like that. Same with the other side. Just pull it up and down. And then being very careful not to over pull it. Just like that. So that way those are free. And I'm gonna do the other side the same way. Okay, now both of my driver boards, or actually four of them, the two on each side, are free. Okay. Now, what you're gonna have to do is actually flip it over. As a matter of fact, I have to do this plug. I'm gonna leave this plug in because I'm in the test part. I want to replace the LED. So I have to pick the TV set back up. So push the LED plug back in. Okay, and we have this one uses a separate FRC board for the picture. No big deal. And um, I'm going to close all my connectors here because what's going to support the TV partially uh, when it's flipping on its back are these wall mounting studs, right? These four here. So we don't have to worry about anything crushing down on the boards. That's why we're using, I have two blankets up under here so it's extra soft. So what I need to do now is we're going to have to pull the outer frame or outer bezel off and they actually got some LED lights on here. They actually screws all the way around the outer bezel. And I'm gonna pull this up because we have to get to the screws. This has to come up, so there's a screw here. I'm gonna pull this all the way off. Okay, so the screws all the way around the outer bezel. These small screws here, those are number one Phillips. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually not gonna pull all the screws out. I'm gonna pull the majority of them. I'm gonna leave the one that's down here on the end, at the very end, down here. On both of them, I'm gonna leave that, those two in, and maybe another one, and I'm not, maybe one on top, because what's gonna happen is once we pull, we're gonna have to flip it over and pull, make sure the screen is facing up when we pull this outer, this outer bracket off. Like I said, they go all the way around the TV. What I'll actually do is probably just leave the one in the corner 
up there in this one down here. I'm gonna leave four screws in, and then once I put the TV over, when I have to go back on under the TV, under the table, right, or under the TV, and just pull the other four screws out after I flip the TV around. Okay, now that I have the TV flipped over, I'm gonna get up under there and re release those four screws. Should be one right here. At the end, one at the top, top, and over there on the other end. Okay, so I don't need to show you that. I'm gonna have to get up under there and just take the screws out. And I left the screws in just because I want some stability when I have the TV on the top part of the bezel right there. Uh, so it won't like slip or move around or anything like that. Okay, but you could take them all off if you want, especially if you have two people. So I forgot to mention it's best to do this with two people and flipping it around because you have a chance of, you know, cracking the screen by holding it or falling on your hand and cracking the screen. But I've been doing this for so long, uh, I got used to it. But anyway, let's get started. Okay, now before we pull the outer bezel off, there are actually some screws. We have to pull this whole bracket, this silver bracket off right here, because it's actually locking the ends of the outer bezel right there. So let's take our name, same number one, Phillips. All right, and take those screws out all the way down Pull this off, see it's already loose, and then we can pull off our Archer bezel. Okay, all the screws are out. This one just should just wiggle right off. And it actually does. Comes right off very easily. So now as far as this outer bezel, there's actually a clip up under on each end. If you've seen it before, it's a clip just um I'm gonna have to get up under there and try to unclip it. Okay, right here is a clip. Just get like a flathead screwdriver, being careful not to <laughs> damage the board or connector. Where are we at here? And that's it. And that is actually loose now. See that? Okay. And do the same with the other side. 
Okay, so once all the screws are removed from the outer bezel, the bottom piece is off. This should slide, loosen it up. Okay. And secondly, before you even do that, double check, make sure that you have all the screws out of this piece right here. And we're just gonna pull it. Be very careful. And this should pull right off. Pull it out some. And then you can actually get one piece off. That would be excellent. <laughs> Just like that. And then making sure not to drop it on the screen because it is metal. Voila, just like that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is actually tape my driver boards to my screen, like that, so they won't get snagged or anything. I'm just gonna tape, put one piece of tape on the outer driver board. careful to put any tape on this actual IC chips okay COF chips all right and now believe it or not I'm going to remove it oh I'm sorry we have some tape around the corners of the screen so before you remove the screen there's actually some tape kind of like hold it in there like right here just going to pull it back if I can, because I want to put that tape back on there if I can. If I can, uh, if you pull it off and it's too crinkled or whatever, you can't put the outer bezel back on. Don't worry about it. But that's just kind of kind of cushion the screen, and there's one on every corner. Okay, push it back like that and do every corner and the screen should come right out with the suction cups. Okay, now the critical part, I want to remove the screen. <clears throat> Fortunately, the screen is not stuck like other TVs. So I'm gonna put my suction cups on here. People have been asking me where to get those suction cups. Uh, you can get those from Harbor Freight. If there's one in your area, you can go pick them up. If not, just order them online. Now, uh, someone did say recommend the the, the, the suction cups with the two on each side with the handle in the middle but I've been doing working with these just fine just center mask them just center mask them on each side push it down slightly so it can stick double check make sure it's stuck this other one push it down slightly shake it around make sure it is good and just pull the screen right up and I'm going to lay it on the couch. In order to remove our diffuser screens, we're going to have to take off these diffuser screen brackets. And the top and bottom comes off first, if I remember correctly. Yes, because there are actually like little tabs up under here. Um, so the top and bottom come off first. Pretty easy, use your fingernails. Just find a little clips, unclip it. the top piece the bottom piece take off the sides and when you're putting them back on sides go on first top and bottom if you want like I normally do is I will actually mark the corner whatever corner you want is fine I'm gonna do this corner right here I'm just gonna mark it that's good I'm also gonna put a little dot on the diffuser screen 
Okay, I'm also gonna mark the actual TV or chassis so I know that everything is even and where it's supposed to go when I put it back together. We're gonna just pull the tape back. It's black tape right here. And sometimes they may have tape on the bottom too. This one does not. Looks like it's tape. And make sure that you keep the diffuser screens all together. Do not reverse them. Things like that. If you need to, put a piece of tape on one side. Because if you sit it straight up on the floor, they are going to slide apart. Okay? like one one big thick screen right here which has to be facing a certain way right with the way it's facing and there's this screen right here and it should be another one it might just be the two screens uh, anyway if you do get them mixed up um, <laughs> you have to make sure that this rough side is facing up on this on this thick diffuser screen and that the shiny side is facing down and the rough side is facing up on this one I'm gonna put a little piece of tape on here, just to hold them together. And there are some holes right here in the screen. Right there. And they go over these little studs that stick up on, on this particular screen here. All right, I'm gonna put a little piece of tape on there just to kind of keep it together. And if you want, you can set it on top of the other screen, being very careful, but I wouldn't do that because the screen is so big. Uh, this may bend and crack the screen. So I'm just gonna set it Okay, now we are at our LED strips. Now we know that the one on the side, on this side was bad. And yeah, these are the eight strip LED strips. The other ones use the six, I'm sorry, this is the eight light LED strip. The other one, the other models uses the six on each one. Obviously this TV is much a little brighter in comparison. And one thing about this TV is that which I really hate is the way they tape this paper on here. Uh, it's almost impossible to get the paper up without tearing it. All right, so uh, try, people always ask me how to get the paper up. Very slowly and carefully, okay? If you want, you can get a prior tool or something and kind of pry it up if it gets stuck somewhere. But I'm gonna show you. Um, how they take this down actually and it's really you know it's like why and I already know why because I don't want us to fix this stuff but Oh, 
Okay, if we look, we have two sets of test points. The first set of test points is for the back end of the strip and the test points by the plug is for the, this side of the strip, closer to the plug. So let's see what we got. Let's start with this one here. Okay, the back side of the strips are lighting up. Okay. Okay, and so that one's good. That's good. 11 volts, okay. Okay, so the back side of this strip is not lighting up, only the front side. Back side is good. First side is good. Back side is good. Front toward me is good. Back side is good. Front is good. Back side is good. Front is good. All right, so here's our bad strip right here. Okay, so this is always our bad strip. So basically, I'm gonna test each individual. It has, the LEDs have individual test points. So for my red lead here, and all the dots right here should be for each individual LED. Okay, that is at three volts. So it's a three volt LEDs. All right, so that's good. I know the problem is on the second half, but we're just, just showing you. Okay, there's our dot there, right here. Okay, let's keep going. Let's go check each one. Red on the left, black on the right, okay? Good.
Okay, so obviously that line is good. And our bad one is going to be on this side. So I'm going to go red, black. Okay. Red, black. Okay, that's okay. Red, black. Okay, now this one actually is our bad LED. One bad LED spoils the whole bunch. All right, this one right here. Second one from the end. Let's check this last one. Make sure that's good. That last one is good. So our problem is right here. This last one, let me pull this. Um, LED cover off. I'm gonna pry it off here some kind of way. I'm gonna get up under there. There we go. Comes right off and you can actually see it is burn. There's a big burn right there in the middle. Okay, I have increased my heat to 480. Okay, so obviously the smaller section the smaller section is positive to my to the left and this bigger section is negative. But the LEDs I have are exactly opposite. I'm going to apply some flux, a little flux on both ends. And well, on this end, we add a little solder.
put some salt on my tip. And I'm going to hold it. Now there's many ways you can do this. You can use hot, you can put solder, more solder both sides to use hot air. But I just prefer to do it this way. Hold it. I want to make sure the solder is covering both ends of the LED, like that. I'm going to go to the little dot to the left and the dot to the right instead of checking right on the LED and make sure that it is connected in the circuit and there we go three bolts 3.2 bolts now obviously this lens cover right here is not going to fit perfectly over it is like a small hole so we have to find another lens cover but I'll actually wait until I fire the TV set up so I can perfectly center the lens on it but this stuff in the bottom is not going to stick back. So I'm going to add some double-sided tape. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, you could have checked the whole line, but I'm pretty sure we're good. We'll check it again once we put it back inside the TV. Okay, so let's try to match this up for the first time. And my plug is on this end, and I'm just gonna try to even this up. There's, there's some little studs here, and there are holes inside the strip. Right, so we're just gonna try to do the first one. Okay, second hole. Okay, and then here is my third hole, right there. Press it down. Plug it back in. And we should have action. Let's see here. I have a red light. What? All right, guys, you want to hear something real funny? And I ain't ashamed to say it. I put the LED uh, strip back in there and it flashed. And I checked all the strips and they were checking okay. So I put my meter, this is how you know when the LED uh, light or strip is about to go bad. Uh, put my meter all the way on low, low current. All right, make sure it's up here, all right. And some LEDs wouldn't light up on the low current. So I replaced all of them and I thought that was a problem. I did the first 
the same um, strip. There was a LED right here. I changed, put it in there. It just flashed again. Backlight just flashed on, went up, went back off. So then this strip here at the bottom, I noticed that all four of those LEDs would not light up when I, um, <laughs> When I um, put my checker on it and put it on low, and put them, yeah, I still had it on low, and so I replaced all them, and I put it back in there, and once again I turned the TV on and it just flashed. But guess what I found out was wrong? This wire here. actually was laying on the board just like that and that's why the LED strips well that's why the, the screen just flashed the LED strips just flashed and that was it so let's see if I can figure out where this goes obviously goes here on the end Just a flash. Okay, we're gonna figure this out right here. We're going to figure this out. Okay guys, I actually soldered the wire. Where are we at? To the board. Okay, let's make sure it's gonna stay there in that position. So, let's fire it up once again. Hit the power. There we go. Finally. Now, the only thing I have to do now, it's just booting up, hopefully. There we go. All I have to do now is find six lens covers for those LED strips. So what I'm gonna do is use, I'm actually gonna use the original LED light covers and I'm actually just gonna tape them down with some tape. That's another way you could do it. So I wanted to use super glue just get it so the light at the top looks like the other ones. Put some tape around the LED, not covering any portion of the top. And put another piece around the other side of the LED. That's it. I'm gonna put a piece of tape on one side, clear tape. Okay, I'm going to center it. Just like the other ones. We'll get that small light at the top. Put some tape on the other side. All right, that's not going anywhere.
Okay, guys, the ultimate test of time. Here we go. Looks good. And one thing you want to remember is to go to settings and go down to where is it at? Picture settings and make sure it's not on the brightest setting. Go down to bright or either normal. Okay. All right, guys, that's it. We are done. Make sure you do subscribe and like the video. And make sure you do check out the course, The Art of Troubleshooting and Repairing Modern Televisions. Until then, I will see you in the next one. Big Dog out.